Hey there, welcome to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. Hosted by me, Emma Capotis. Each week, I'll be covering everything from dance music culture, industry news, trending topics, and festival tips, advice, and reviews. You can also expect to hear stories from ravers, artists, business owners, and more. Tune in every Wednesday for your weekly dose of peace, love, unity, and respect. Hey guys, welcome back to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. I am your host, Emma Capotis. Welcome to the podcast, fam. So sorry for the party girl voice. We had a wild birthday weekend this weekend, and it was fucking amazing. Um, but I'm still tired. My voice is still recovering, but uh, it was a really good weekend. I turned 31 yesterday um, on the 21st. So this weekend I had to, um, I actually went away with the Lunchbox fam for a bit of a company retreat up in New York and it was the best time ever. Uh, we had the whole team get together for the first time. So I was meeting some people who I've been working with for like two years now, finally in person. I think there was like people from nine different states that flew in for it. So it was the best way to spend a birthday weekend. And then Sunday night, I sent it over to a Avant Gardener to see John Summit play a four-hour set, which was absolutely incredible. Easily one of my favorite artists. Um, if you haven't seen him live yet, I highly, highly recommend it. He threw the fuck down and it was uh, it was the best way ever to ring in 31. So I got back home Monday at like 7.45 in the morning. We're still catching up on sleep here, but very excited for today's episode. Um, I do have a couple quick announcements to share with you guys too, but before we get started, I wanted to share a message from one of our partners, Rolita Couture. Rolita Couture is an incredible ravewear brand that has inclusive sizing, uh, and their slogan is sexy has no size. They just released their brand new Be My Galaxy collection, so you guys can go check that out. That is live on their site, along with many other collections they have with all kinds of silhouettes designs patterns colors like honestly anything you're into if you like black they've got black if you like bright colors they've got colors accessories all that good stuff they also have some men's collections <clears throat> excuse me now as well uh, so you guys can save 15 percent off your rolita couture orders with code emma k that is code emma k for 15 percent off at rolita couture go stock up for your next festival get your next outfit. They have the cutest stuff. So huge shout out to Rolita Couture for being a partner on today's episode. Alrighty guys. So today I'm going to have a guest on who I was super excited to sit down with and chat with. Uh, her name is Alyssa, but she goes by the corporate raver on social media and her page. Um, she's primarily on TikTok is all about being a millennial and uh, raving in your thirties and relating to people about that. Um, she also has a lot of experience raving solo. So today we're going to just chat about um, the experience of raving in your 30s, going to events alone, um, and then juggling a corporate job because she has a very serious job as her nine to five. And then she creates content um, for this community on the side. So we're going to talk about all of that today. Um, if any of you guys feel, you know, similar where you're living these two lives like maybe even your work doesn't even know that you go to music festivals or rave or anything like that I think you're really gonna like today's episode okay so before we dive into our oldie but a goodie I do have a couple quick announcements here so I came to a decision and it's gonna be a temporary thing but um kind of behind the scenes for a while now I've been getting different opportunities and you know work has been crazy so I do work I juggle like a couple different jobs um, um, as well as content creation coaching I do social media management um, I work with a company called Festival Insider in gray area I run those socials so um, things have kind of been building for a while and I've been doing this podcast now for going on three years and I have never taken a break I think I've only skipped two weeks ever in those three years um, and I had been thinking about it for a while and I, I'm going to switch this podcast temporarily to bi-weekly schedule um, just to try that out for my own, you know, 
just to be able to catch up on things, to be honest, guys. I, I really want to grow this podcast and I want to grow as a person and continue to push my content. And producing this podcast every single week is a ton of work. I have help on this podcast. My girl, B.B. Howell, does our video editing. I have my friend Ryan helping with our Facebook group. Um, so you know, it's the most amazing thing to do, but it's a ton of work to come up with episodes, record, edit, do all of the socials, um, write scripts, get new guests on. Like it's a ton to produce this every single week. And right now I am feeling very burnt out. So I'm going to switch to bi-weekly episodes and see how that feels because I personally think that that will allow me to put more time and energy into each week so that I don't feel like I have any filler episodes or anything like that, but I can have more time and energy to focus on the two episodes a month rather than four. Um, and then that will allow me to grow in some other places as well, which I have some exciting things coming up. So I just wanted to let you know. So next week there will not be an episode and then it will continue the following week. And we're just going to try that out for a little bit. But all of the socials will still be active. So join our Facebook group and our Discord. Um, you have plenty of people to interact with, connect with. We can talk about episodes, all that good shit. We're still going to have meetups in person, all of that stuff. Um, so yeah. So thank you guys for being patient with me and for understanding and for being along for the ride. Um, very excited about some upcoming episodes. So just wanted to let you know that that change was going to be happening. All right. With all that being said, uh, our oldie but a goodie this week is from a London-based house duo. This one, this is one of those songs that I found out about more in more recent years, but it came out in 2013. Um, it's from Dusky and it's called Careless. And this is off of their Careless EP that came out in 2013. Um, this is just an incredible house track. I really like the overall vibe and beat of this. And again, when I found it, I was like, how, I've, how have I been sleeping on this for like 10 years? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, how did I just find this now? So I want to share this with you because I think you guys will really enjoy it. So here is a quick clip of Dusky's song Careless. <laughs> Alrighty, you guys, thank you for sticking around for this long intro. Uh, I want to jump right into the interview today with Alyssa. I know you guys are going to love her and this is a really fun topic uh, to talk about for me being in my 30s and being um, a raver as well. So please join me in welcoming Alyssa at the Corporate Raver to the podcast. All right, guys. So today I have an amazing member of this community on with me today who goes by at the Corporate Raver online. Uh, her first name is Alyssa. She makes funny and relatable videos about uh, being a raver, but also having, you know, navigating your 30s in the corporate world. So today we're going to dive into all of those topics uh, in depth. So we're going to get started, but welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Of course. Yeah. Have you done podcasts before? Is this first you one? You are or? my first. Yay, <laughs> I've never done a yeah. podcast. So oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> we, I love chatting with Zoom content world, creators. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the best. I mean, so obviously you guys, if we're going to pop up some of your TikToks throughout this too, I definitely want to like have those on the screen just so that people like know what we're talking about here. But um, before we dive into all the content side of things. I just want everybody to get to know you a little bit better and I would love to get to know you. So could you just give us a little background on yourself, where you're from, what you do, all those good things? Yeah. Um, oh, I don't even know where to start. So yeah. um, I'm, <laughs> I'm originally from Northern California. Um, I grew up in kind of a cow town outside of Sacramento, um, but I live in LA now. I've been here for uh, 16 years, which is wild to say. Wow. Um, I left the hometown when I was 18. Um, mm. but I originally moved down here because I've always had a, a love for music at a very young age. Like even before I was old enough to drive, my mom was driving me to concerts and taking me mm. to shows and buying me tickets and specifically the Backstreet Boys. Like if it was a boy band or pop or anything, yes. that was my life. And, yep. <laughs> you know, my favorite thing at the end of the day at school, after school is to come home and watch TRL and vote and see if the Backstreet Boys made it mm -hmm. in the top 10. Um, so yeah, I've kind of always had a, a really strong love for music and live music and being in that experience. And so what better place to be than LA for that? Um, mm -hmm. originally moved down here cause I wanted to work in music. Um, wow. and I actually did, um, a lot of internships. Um, so I went to school also while I was here, I got my bachelor's in marketing. Um, but I did six internships, um, during that, you know, two year period in school. Mm -hmm. 
And it was so eye opening um, and really helped shape my career and helped me understand what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. And mm-hmm. the thing that shocked me coming out of that, because um, I did internships in music, fashion, PR, talent management, um, you name it, I probably did an internship. Mm-hmm. In. Um, and what opened my eyes actually through that experience is that I did not want to work in music. I did not want to work in the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. It was so political and, um, you know, the money wasn't good. The people were not being, you know, promoted based off of their work. It was based off of who you knew. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of took the fun of, of the, you know, the live music experience away from, uh, for me, yeah. um, working at shows and, not, you know, having to work them and not be at them for fun. Um, mm-hmm. I was kind of like, I don't, I don't really want to do this actually. Yeah. Um, which was shocking to me because I was so set on that's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually kind of went into, uh, you know, more traditional marketing and um, tech um, and um, kind of agency world. Um, so started doing that. And um, yeah, just kind of loved being in LA and going to a lot of live shows. Um, I actually back in the day started a blog um, called The Fan mm-hmm. Files um, to kind of document all of the different Aww. shows and everything that I went to and got into awesome. concert concert photography. Um, so I bought a Nikon and brought it to all the shows and started getting tickets to go shoot the shows. And mm. I was having so much fun doing it, but it also started get, getting really draining because I did still have a nine to six job right. um, during the day. There were weeks where I was going to shows sometimes seven days a week. Um, oh I was going God. to show every single <laughs> night and I would come home and have to edit the photos and do the posts. Cause if you don't mm-hmm. post that that night, it's already irrelevant the next day. So right. someone else has already posted it. <clears throat> so it was just getting too time consuming. Mm-hmm. Um, so unfortunately I had to stop that, but I was still going to shows a lot. Um, um, and then, um, yeah. And in terms of what I do now, if it fast forward, um, a few years, um, I am head of client success for a, uh, client success and onboarding for software and reverse logistics company. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, it was a tech startup. Um, I've been there for about three years, uh, but we were actually just acquired back in June, uh, by a very large publicly traded company. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been a lot, I don't know if anyone's <clears throat> listening has worked in the startup tech space, but mm-hmm. it is draining and it's a lot of work and you have to wear a lot of hats and you're kind of just on 24 seven. Um, and so it's been a wild three years, um, but really grateful for that experience in my career. Um, and yeah, so we're kind of in that transition phase of, you know, being part of this bigger company and not being a scrappy startup anymore. Mm -hmm. And, um, so a lot of change, um, a lot of things happening right now. So trying to balance that and this new TikTok thing that I've been doing, um, has been interesting. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my background in a, in a nutshell. I love it. That's so cool. Wait, I love this because you, yeah, you've like experienced it all. You've had a lot of different sides of this industry, which this is why I love doing this. Cause I would have no idea about all that stuff, but <laughs> that's so interesting. Is there anything though you would, so obviously you decided against like actually going into the industry, like further down in your career, but what were some of like the biggest learning lessons for you out of that space? I'm sure it's obviously difficult to being like right in the middle of it in LA, which probably so many people get so burnt out quickly too. Yeah. I think the people think that there's a lot of glamour and it's just fun all the time. And Mm -hmm. there were definitely some times at at internships where I was like, this is amazing where I worked at a a talent management company. I gave copy to Leonardo DiCaprio and my hand was just shaking (laughs) and everyone's like, wow, why would you not want to work there? Well, what you don't also see is that the, you know, the assistants there uh, have to ask permission to go to the bathroom because they can't leave their phone oh unattended. If that yeah. phone rings and no one answers it, all hell breaks loose. Right. Um, and everyone there just looked like they hated life. Um, mm-hmm. And it was just such a kind of a dark place to be, to be honest. It was just not a good culture right. um, that I liked. And I, you know, um, there was a, uh, an internship that I did in music distribution and there were people that I talked to who had been there like five years and they're still in kind of an entry-level position. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was kind of odd to me that they weren't being promoted. Their career yeah. wasn't growing. They were kind of still stuck at a receptionist desk. And I was like, mm-hmm. to me, it didn't seem like that company or that industry valued, you know, hard work and, you know, career growth or anything like that. But then right. I also did an internship at, um, it was a phone company, um, a long time ago. It doesn't exist anymore. It was acquired 
like three different times, but mm -hmm. um, it was, again, it was kind of a tech startup. But the thing that I really liked about that space is that um, you did get recognized for your hard work. You did get paid for it. And there mm -hmm. were people and managers who cared about your career growth and there were opportunities for you to go and grow and do different things. And mm -hmm. I didn't see that in the, the at least in the, the few experiences I had in the music industry, I didn't see that. Right, um, right. So I was really grateful to see that at, you know, I was 18 when I did all of these internships. So mm -hmm. I was really lucky to get that experience early on. So I didn't waste my time going in and, you know, working right. for a company that was later, I was going to take five years to find out it wasn't going to, I don't know, uh, yeah. you, you know, do well, but um, yeah. So that's kind of what I, I saw um, going back and Early forth on. between the internships. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way though. I, that's how I felt same around the same age too, like in, in college doing and paid intern, actually they were unpaid, <laughs> excuse me, unpaid internships yeah. in the magazine industry is what I wanted to do in New York. And same thing, like dream job wanted to do it until you're the people literally like exchanging their clothes and returning it for them and like getting their coffee in the morning. You're like, okay, yeah. This. <laughs> yeah. I remember like, yeah. the first internship I got was, um, uh, it was universal music and I cried when I got it. I was so excited. I was like, yeah. this is a dream. And at the end of it, I was like, still really grateful for the experience and it was fun, but I was like, I don't, I don't really want to do that, mm -hmm. uh, which I was not expecting to have that kind of reaction coming out of sure. it. Sure. Um, but yeah, but now it's so, full circle well, learnings. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And so this is so interesting how you've like come back to this, but you are like using all these things that you've been passionate about all along. And so on the show side, like you said, like you kind of were exposed to music and you were going to shows, but when did like dance music EDM kind of come into the picture? Yeah. So, um, I was going to a ton of shows in LA, but EDM definitely wasn't one of those that was even on my radar. Mm -hmm. Um, but in 2012, a friend of mine said, let's go to Coachella. And I was like, mm. hell yeah, I was all in, I was very into like indie rock, um, at the time. Mm -hmm. And so that is like your haven, um, for yeah. that type of music. But one of the things that Coachella is, is amazing for is learning, um, and exposing yourself to new music and different types of music. And, mm -hmm. um, I remember looking at the lineup and just kind of picking random names off the lineup to try and learn some of the artists that, and, you know, as I like to schedule, mm -hmm. obviously my, um, my lineups and who I'm going to go see on certain days. So I was kind of trying to pick and see who I wanted to, um, go see their set. And I remember picking, um, Nero and I was like, I don't know who or what Nero is. And I mm -hmm. just kind of put it on and I remember putting on promises and, uh, my whole demeanor just changed. Like, yeah. What, what is this? This is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I remember going to see Nero and after that, it was just kind of like the floodgates opened. Yeah. Um, I, if, for anyone who goes to Coachella, there's a stage there that is pretty much dedicated to EDM. And I remember just kind of living at that stage. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of stayed there and my friends were like, let's go over here. Let's go see so-and-so. And I was like, no, I'm just going to stay good. <laughs> I'm, good, I'm good here. I don't know what's happening yeah. right now, but this is so much fun. Um, but yeah, so those were my first few festivals was Coachella. I remember seeing Skrillex and Calvin Harris and, um, all of that. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of definitely what sparked it for me and mm -hmm. kind of that transition from all of the, the indie rock pop shows that I was going mm -hmm. to kind of started to diminish and I started going more to, um, the EDM shows. So I was going right. to, I started going to hard summer, uh, down here. And yeah, I just kind of started seeing the community and the music. The music mm -hmm. is really kind of what, what pulled me in. It was so new to me and different mm -hmm. and just so much fun. Uh, but yeah, it kind of started for me at, at Coachella. Oh, that's so cool. I love seeing like, obviously there's trends. I'm reading a book right now called the underground is massive and it's a history of electronic music. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I'm the same as you, same time frame there was like, obviously that burst, especially around people our age, like 2010s. Yeah. I feel like we're the 2010s generation of ravers. And then I'm reading about like the eighties and nineties, like how it like evolved from there. And obviously I gravitate towards us because we're similar age and we found it around the same time, but it's just so interesting to talk to people. Like I can't even imagine how many there are that are like included in this bucket because it was just like such a big like growth spurt then, but then now I'm starting to think about it too. I'm like, okay, so who are the 2020 ravers? Like, who are they? <laughs> I think they're more of like this post pandemic, like we didn't get to experience shows and now yeah. we're going crazy. Plus you have this like house music burst and movement happening in the United States, which 
it's always been here, but it's even bigger now. So that's yeah. like what I'm kind of like categorizing now is like the 2020 ravers, but I'm curious yeah. to see where that still goes. Yeah, I've been talking to a lot of people like that too, like really young, you know, mm-hmm. 19, 20 years old and they're saying that they're, this is their first one or they, it, it, when they say that they started, they started 2019. So it yeah. really kind of started this year because everything kind of shut down after that. But yep. um, hearing them say that this is my first one or this is my first time on the rail or anything like that makes me so excited for them Same. that I just am mm-hmm. excited to see how it takes off for them. And, you know, if it, becomes as much of a part of their life as it did mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm kind of just, it's almost like looking at like younger you, um, yep. you just get so excited and you want to teach them and show them all the things. And yes. Um, yeah. It's, it's really fun seeing the the younger ravers kind of experience it for the first time. A hundred percent. I mean, this, I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit here, but while we're on this topic too, on the flip side, there are so many people that I'm sure you're exposed to too, who are in their thirties, forties, fifties, who are starting now also yeah. because maybe they, maybe they went to 2019, maybe they didn't, but now they're like, okay, there's this whole world. Plus obviously TikTok's been around, but it really exploded during the pandemic. Yeah. And then now there's this whole, you know, EDM culture, rave culture on TikTok, which more people are getting exposed to this music and this community. So what have you seen from like people like 30 plus who are now just getting into the scene? Yeah, they, so I didn't realize how, cause when I started TikTok, that wasn't my intent just to talk about how old I was or right. anything like that. <laughs> but the first time I did, I got so many comments and DMs and, and things from mm-hmm. people saying, I love that you're talking about this. I feel the same way. I'm afraid to post about it. I like to go to raise or I want to go to one, but I'm 40 or I'm 35 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they're too old to do it because they'll either get judged for it, whether they think it's the people there that will judge them for it or people in their life that will judge them for it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that there was such a, not a necessarily a need, but um, a desire to see other people our age go and do that Mm -hmm. and to kind of make it feel normal. So that's been really cool for me is, um, kind of trying to post about that. And people will come up to me at, um, festivals or events now and recognize me from TikTok. And, Mm -hmm. um, someone actually, this happened last week, someone came up to me and people young and old actually come up to me and they, they really love that. I talk about the age thing because, um, you know, a younger person came up to me and they said, I love that you talk about this because it gives me hope that I can keep doing this for a long time and not feel weird about it. Yep. I was like, yep. Oh my God, I didn't even think of it that way. Totally. Um, or someone came up to me last week and said, I'm about to turn 30 and your content makes me feel okay about still doing this. Mm-hmm. And that made, I, that made me so happy. I didn't realize that that was, yeah. I, that was a legitimate fear that people have. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love talking to people and encouraging them to, to go and do it. Um, because there's no age on this. There's this woman, uh, I met a couple of times at, um, EDC and beyond. She's got to be in her seventies. Um, I think, I think she has a, like a popular name. I can't find her on social, but people know her, but she goes by herself. She's in her seventies. She's totally decked out glitter lights, everything, and just living her best life. I just saw her in a corner, just dancing the night away that's and I so awesome. I was like I'm yeah. looking at my future <laughs> that's me yep 40 years or whatever it is and it was it was so cool to see so I think that yeah and it's not that people at the events too and that's another thing that I want to try to get across in my mm-hmm. content too is that it's not the people at the events that are going to judge you yeah no one gives a shit <laughs> no one cares at all yeah. if anything they think it's amazing. And they think you're badass for still doing it, Mm -hmm. Uh, but no one at the events, I've never felt judged or anything like that. Also people don't think I'm as old as I am. So I think there's that, Mm -hmm. but, um, when I tell them they're like, that's so cool. And as Mm -hmm. long as you're giving off good vibes and you're having fun and you're enjoying the music and you're being nice to people, no one's going to care how old you are or what you look like or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's been really cool to see. Totally agree with you. I love, that's why I I love talking about this on the podcast too, because it is all about visibility. And I had the exact same reaction as you. I think I forget. I think it was my, one of my first like viral TikToks was same thing. It was, um, the sound from 
knocked up where she's like, am I too old to be yes, here or yeah. whatever? <laughs> that was my, one of my first ones that ever went viral about like grieving in your thirties. And mind you, like, fair enough. I just turned 30 guys. I put that out there. <laughs> like yeah. people who are like 39 are probably like, shut the fuck up. But yeah. No, but then that one just took off and I was like, wow, okay. And then ever since I've done that, any, any TikTok I post about raving in your thirties, like hits the algorithm, right. Every single time. And I'm like, wow, there's just this whole community around this. So I think it's totally about visibility. And I, I got that feeling now too, about um, parents who rave, cause that's like the next phase I'm hoping to step into soon. And, and I look at my friends who are content creators who have kids and I'm like, you guys don't understand how much I look up to you and respect you. Like, please keep talking about how That's you juggle yeah. that life because I'm, I want to do that. And I'm so afraid that I'm not going to be able to go to mo- as much or blah, blah, blah. So I think it's just as important for people to see, like, you don't, this doesn't go away when you yeah. turn a certain age, you know, friends might fade out here and there, but yeah. how, how is your friend group and family and everything kind of reacted? Um, I mean, I've been going to this stuff for so long and I pretty much always go alone to everything. Um, so that's, that's their only concern with all of this. That they yeah. get nervous that I go by myself, but honestly, I feel, I feel so incredibly safe at these events, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, I, so I have a big friend group and a family that I'm really close to, but none of them really like EDM. Um, I have mm-hmm. one friend that I go to a couple of events a year with, uh, but we don't live in the same state. So it's kind of hard to coordinate going to too mm-hmm. much together. Um, but, um, yeah, they think it's hilarious and they think that they're like, that's so on brand for you. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> of course you would do TikTok. Of course yeah. you would do this. Of course you'd be talking about music. That's awesome. Um, cause they do have the history with the blog and the photography and everything. So mm-hmm. it's kind of seems like a more modern progression of, Good fit. of that. Yeah. yeah. So they're not surprised. <laughs> That's so funny. How we talk about going on your own. Cause I think that's another thing too. If anybody's listening, um, maybe, yeah, exactly. Like maybe your, your hometown friends or people you're still friends with aren't into this, but that's a beautiful thing. You can meet so many people at the events who live across the United States, across the world, who you can just meet up with yeah. at festivals too. You don't even, you can travel by yourself, but how any tips and advice for solo ravers? Yeah. Um, I think so I get a lot of comments and questions about that too. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I wasn't trying to tout that as a, you know, anything that I thought was interesting. Cause just cause I've been doing it for so long. I'm like, Oh yeah, of course I'm going to go alone. I don't have anyone that I know that likes to right. do this stuff. Um, so the way that I've kind of always looked at it is cause before I t- kind of made that decision to go alone, I was kind of sad thinking, you know, oh, there's a show I want to go to. I'm going to go with. Mm-hmm. And then that first time I decided to go anyway, I thought, you know what? It's, it's better to go alone than not go at all. Yeah. Then I totally. think you're, you're more sad and you're more upset if you, if you don't go at all. So mm-hmm. that has kind of always gotten me through the, you know, e- it's an easy decision uh, for right. me, but some people, yeah, think that they are, going to be, you know, look like a loner at a festival. No one knows if you're alone. You're Mm -hmm. in a crowd there. No one notices. It's not like you're sitting in a movie theater at assigned seats and then there's just one (laughs) and there's empty seats on the side of you. It's not like that, you know, at an event you're in a crowd, no one notices anyway. So just, you know, if you just go and dance and have fun, no one knows. Um, mm-hmm. I think some of the other questions that I get of reason that they're scared is because a lot of people like to partake in party substances. favors and, yeah. and substances. I personally don't anymore. Um, so that's the one thing I don't feel super, you know, confident in being able to provide advice in mm-hmm. um, of how to do that alone. I would probably suggest not doing that alone. Um, right, right. Which I think is one reason people are deterred from going alone mm-hmm. because they want to do that and they don't want right. to do it you know, without Um, but I will say if you are going to do that at an event alone, um, I have seen, you know, anyone who looks even remotely sick or not well or anything, Mm -hmm. there's always so many people that rush your aid, right? There's always so many people around you, um, keeping an eye out. And even if it's not ground control or a medic or something, Mm -hmm. if you don't look well, there's always someone around you that's going to be willing to help you or get totally. Um, yep. so I think everyone should still feel safe in that regard. Um, mm-hmm. I think everyone needs a rave mom though, to like make sure you're drinking water and do all totally. of that. So as long as you can remember to do some of that stuff on your own, um, yeah. and just be responsible, then, um, I don't think that should be a big issue. 
Yeah. I think that's super important for people to hear too. And even say, even if you prefer to be solo, cause I've gotten these questions in the past, like you can still totally do your thing and just make friends for a set or for a night, yeah. like you don't have to lock in a commitment for the whole weekend, but you can yeah. kind of, you know, even if you're shy, it's, it could be as simple as just like vibing with the people next to you and then striking up a conversation. And they yeah. could uh, more, I feel like anytime our group hears it or whatever, if we hear somebody solo immediately, we're like, Oh yeah. Hang with us the whole night. If you want, you're welcome to, if you yeah. want to. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think even just, you know, like you said, kind of vibing mm -hmm. next to it with a group next to you, if there's a big drop and you guys all freak out together, look at yep. each other and share that moment together immediately brings you together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been, when people find out that I'm alone, they immediately start to feel bad for me, but I right. don't feel bad for me. I'm <laughs> yeah, having an amazing I'm time. I'm yeah. great. But yeah. then they try to like, you know, invite me to their group, mm -hmm. which I love and it's very appreciated. Um, and sometimes I do some, but a lot of times, um, I do actually prefer being alone, especially at a festival mm -hmm. because I, I like to do what I want to do, go to the sets that I want to go to spend mm -hmm. as much time as I want to spend there. Um, if I want to sprint to a stage and not have to worry about losing five people behind me, I love that. You're good. So yeah. I, I do really love the independence of, especially at a festival going alone. Um, cause they're my, my first EDC, I went with a group of, you know, three or four people and all we did was basically go there and come home together, but I wasn't mm -hmm. really with them <laughs> at all. Right. Um, during the night, uh, we were kind of all just did our own thing, which I love. Exactly. Um, and yeah, you make friends at every stage. Um, and everyone's always there for that artist. So mm -hmm. you always have someone to kind of share that experience with and, and look at, you know, to appreciate the moment with. Right. So, um, yeah, I always still have a really great time, um, going alone. You're getting me excited again. I'm like, I know I have a festival in a month and a half, but now I'm like, I really want to go to a festival. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like craving that energy now. I know this month is actually really slow for shows. And the fact mm -hmm. that I went this whole weekend without a show is very weird to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything again until I'm going to Skyline um, in a few weeks here in nice. LA. Um, but yeah, there's nothing between that. Usually I'm going to something every weekend. So this month is very the quiet. Slow. I know. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's, gonna, it's a time. nice break. This this year festival season is packed. There's a lot crazy. going on. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, I want to know your schedule Good. before yeah. I let you go, but yeah, just to finish off the solo raver stuff, I just encourage people listening to, cause I, I personally wouldn't have done this in my early twenties, even mid, like, I, I don't know why I was just so big on like, our group does not leave each other. We go to the bathroom together. Like we never, ever would venture for that. But then this past year, I made it a point to like go off on my own, even at EDC Vegas, which like, if you had told me that when I I was 25. I would have been like, fuck, no, I'm not leaving the group. I'm going to get lost in a second. Like no way, but we had a totem. So that was the savior of everything, but it was amazing. I just went and vibed out with people for a set left, like floated around. So I encourage you guys listening to go yeah. do it and don't, and, and exactly like you said, don't miss the opportunity to go to a festival that you really, really want to, because you can't find anybody to go with yeah. you. Like you can go on radiate or find people online, join the rave culture cast, Facebook group or discord, like people will adopt you. You'll find yes. a family. Yeah. hundred percent. So definitely go do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Highly um, encouraged. I want to chat a little bit too about like work-life balance as well, because since you are in a corporate job, like how does that work for you? How much time off do you get? How do you balance doing content creation on the side? All the yeah. Time? I think now that everything is remote, that's been so incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, because even this past year at EDC, I didn't really take, I took one day off. I took Monday, obviously just to recover. Mm -hmm. Um, but that Friday I was actually working up until I, I was on calls Damn. doing my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was on a call with my leadership team. And I even told them, I was like, I'm in Vegas right now. I just checked into my hotel. I'm very upfront with them. And okay. So you were in the hotel. So you doing. went to Vegas and then we're kind of like working. Yeah. I was going to home in Vegas. The hotel. Got yeah. it. Got it. Okay. You got to do yeah. what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I know that not everyone has that luxury of being able to work remote and kind of do go wherever. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's how I've been making it work is that I, I don't really have to take much time off because now I can just work wherever. Mm -hmm. So, um, my company is really, um, great with that, that as long as, you know, you're available when you need to be available or sure. let us know when you're not, then it's fine. Um, we have unlimited PTO, um, it's nice. I say that in quotes because it's still, you know, within reason, um, yeah. you'll take weeks off at a time, but, um, that, yeah, it's not tracked. So, but 
for the most part, I think even if it was, I wouldn't even be coming close to taking a ton of time off because of the remote um, access port part of it. Right. Uh, but in terms of balancing that with the, the content creation, I'm, I'm still kind of trying to figure that out. I used to kind of scatter it throughout the week. Um, but now kind of trying to, you know, do everything, um, or as much as I can, um, on, on the weekend. So mm -hmm. then I can kind of just post it throughout the week. Um, that gets hard when there's trends that are coming on and you need to do yep. it quickly to stay on top of it. So I'll do maybe a couple throughout the week. So that's how we've been kind of trying to balance it is grouping as many, um, filming as many of it as I can during the weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if something pops up or I get an idea during the week, um, doing that really quickly. Maybe. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, yeah, I agree with you with the working from home, obviously like you need to put boundaries and you need to be able to like do your job and not get too distracted, but yeah. it is nice that you're not in an office in case you do want to just like hop on something really quickly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And have that break. Oh. Yeah. And especially at home. So I don't feel weird doing it in front of coworkers. Right. So this, <laughs> this is imagine? my office. Uh, yeah. I know. Oh, I, went in, <laughs> I went into the office last week. We had the do an on-site um, meeting. And I was just thinking, I was like, well, there'd be some good content I could get here, but I would be mortified if I did <laughs> anything in front of my boss or, you know, my coworkers or anything. Yep. Because they, that's one thing they don't know about yet is TikTok. At least mm -hmm. to my knowledge, no one's found it. Um, I have maybe one coworker who, who knows about it. They know about the raving gotcha. and, the okay. and all of that, but the content creation is new. Um, so yep. to my knowledge, no one has seen it, or at least let me know that they've seen it. So I'm just waiting for that day to happen. <laughs> Good. To, that was my next question. Yeah. Because I yeah. know, I know a lot of people get nervous about that or keep their like whatever profiles private and stuff. I was similar to you. I, my, like my friends, coworkers knew, but it took a while for my boss to finally, I, we never spoke about my Instagram, but I finally had to be like, oh, I'm going on all these vacations because I'm going to festivals. And yeah. luckily she was very into rock, like rock music. I forget if her husband was a musician or something. So she understood because she likes to go to live events, but I, I just always remember thinking like, please don't look at my account. Please don't look at my account. Cause I was <laughs> posting so many rave outfits and I just yeah. was like, I would have been mortified. So I don't know if you have any advice or anything like as far as how you'd feel if people would find out or how you're navigating that. Yeah. So I, I know, so everything I post, I kind of look at from the lens of if my boss found this, mm -hmm. how would I explain this? Yep. <laughs> yep. Would I feel confident defending it? Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yep. So I kind of look at it through that lens. Um, I, I personally don't post a lot in rave outfits. So I kind of have that. I, I'll, I'll post at festivals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I think my outfits are on the modest side. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I kind of always look at it from that lens. Could I defend this? I'm not talking. So the way that I always look at it too is um, I actually don't usually post my name. Um, so it's not really mm -hmm. on any of my accounts. Um, I don't post the name of the company that I work for. Right. Um, so they can't tie that back to, you know, cause I'm client facing. So I manage the relationship with all of our clients, um, mm -hmm. for the company I work for. So that's a concern too, is that, I don't know if I posted the name of the company, they would reach out and say something to one of my clients or right. something like that. But my content overall is just kind of, um, you know, I don't talk poorly about the company, mm -hmm. um, or anything like that. So, um, and I, I don't talk about you know, substances or anything. Yeah. So, um, I'm also not, you know, dancing half naked, um, to yep. weird TikTok sounds. So I do try to keep a level of, you know, professionalism on mm -hmm. it. Um, and, um, one of the things that too, uh, and also kind of trying to keep the content to what feels natural to me, right. um, is, and I, so it kind of comes off as genuine and not weird or too goofy. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, um, yeah, that's kind of always helped me in terms of, you know, judging whether or not I should post something. There yeah, have been yeah. definitely things where I film it. I'm like, I'm going to sit on this for a day and yeah. see if I still <laughs> want to do this. Um, yep. there have been a couple of TikToks that I posted recently about burnout, um, and mm -hmm. just being, you know, frustrated with your company, um, that have gone fairly viral. And I so did I, see that one. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So, but I thought that was interesting too, that, you know, obviously I'm not alone in, in that regard, but that was yep. the only one where I was kind of on the fence is could work. 
say something about it's this. relatable that's why I did it's so relatable yeah. <laughs> I know so um that's the only one I was kind of on the fence about but other than that I think all the content is just funny and goofy and talks about stuff that they know that I do anyway so mm-hmm. um yeah I try not to hide that part of it because in general I kind of think you know it's only weird if you make it weird so mm-hmm. I think by just being open with you know I manage a team of people I have five direct reports that um, are under me. And I know at one point they're going to see their boss on TikTok talking about raves. I agree. And I appreciate your perspective because one, I think you're being true to yourself. Like you have to be an authentic creator. And if people want to do other things and put that online, that makes sense. But at the end of the day, I think it's like what you're comfortable with and also being respectful to your company, which I think is what you're doing. So do you, I'm sure, you know, the, I think his creator name is just Rod. He's like really famous for doing yes. all like the work anxiety. <laughs> I randomly saw him at a bar last night. It was a very weird. No way. Yeah, I was, I went to a bar I'd never been to before and it randomly was Daniel Bennett's birthday. Oh my um, God. I don't know if you know him. And Rod was there. Um, average fashion blogger was there. There's so many, it was a very weird night. And I was just kind of hanging out, <laughs> not hanging out, but yeah, um, where it was kind of just like standing in the crowd next to them. It was very weird. Oh, so, I would die. Yeah. I can't even imagine. I love Rod. Rod's my see. favorite. Yeah. Rod <laughs> yeah. is my favorite number one he was probably the first one I ever followed on TikTok so he's the was, best yeah and watching him blow up too I've heard him like talk about it in interviews too I mean that's like the beauty about TikTok is you literally have no idea you never know where it can go or how much and like even if that's not your purpose like if you just want to yeah. post TikToks post TikToks but he has done a really good job of navigating yeah. that too because he he that's the whole point of his it's like comedy about like work anxiety but he never yeah. blows up his company or where he works or anything yeah. like that yeah. And still has a successful TikTok career. So yeah, it's totally so I possible. definitely use him as a, as a model of, mm-hmm. you know, how to talk about work without talking about work. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But even for people, I mean, listening now too, I think it's good just to project ahead. Right. And think ahead. Cause like now things are on the internet. So even yeah. if you delete them, you don't know wh- if they're actually deleted and things like that. So I think it is good to, yeah, think about if you would be Pro, like I, we all make mistakes too. I've posted stuff, you know, that's like supposed to be funny about substances and things like that and have gotten some like criticism for that or feedback. And I've been like, okay, maybe I shouldn't post that type of content on my feed or maybe like my sense of humor sometimes isn't resonated properly yeah. in a TikTok. So you do have to be careful and think about what career you want in the future. Are you applying yeah. jo- for jobs right now? Are they going to be looking at your Instagram page? Like, yeah just think about it. Think about it before you post something. (laughs) Yeah. I think, yeah. Employers definitely do snoop around and and look for that. So yeah, just kind of look at it through that lens. And when you post content for sure. Yeah. And what's coming up for you? Like, how do you exactly like stay on top of ideas and trends and things like that? Like what's your creation process? Like, um, it's, I hate even calling it a creation process. It's kind of just random ideas (laughs) at this point. Um, but, um, I, throughout the week, as I'm just kind of scrolling through TikTok, same sounds um, that I like, or if I get an idea for one, or even if it's just a sound that I like, and I was like, mm-hmm. I need to figure out something to, to work with the sound. Cause I think it's really funny. Yeah. Um, so kind of save that throughout the week. And then, you know, today um, on the weekend, I'll just go through the sounds that I saved um, and then kind of plot out which ones that I want to actually film for. Mm -hmm. Um, so not super in depth or complicated or anything, but I am starting to think, um, ahead a little bit more, um, which I haven't been doing, uh, because it's just sort of been on the fly, but kind of planning out, okay, I know that these fests are coming up. Is there any maybe transitions or something that I want to start now that would be kind of fun to complete Mm -hmm. while I was at a festival? Um, are there events or, um, um, you know, cultural like holidays or anything that I want to be able to start thinking about ideas for now. Yeah. Um, to tie into that. Um, and I kind of thought, cause I, I managed, a, um, I'm going to date myself, but an old job and <laughs> I managed my space, um, for a company <laughs> back Love in the it. day. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like an OG social media manager a long time ago when I remember oh, kind of plotting yes. out the calendar. So I kind of feel like I'm getting back into that now. Um, yep. so full circle a little bit. Um, but yeah, kind of just plotting out in terms of, um, you know, holidays, cultural events, um, things like that, and starting to actually put a, a calendar together, um, which is weird to say, for my personal TikTok account, but um, right. yeah, so kind of it's, it's, it's graduating um, and evolving for sure. Cool. No, it's good. I mean, 
as you're growing and like you're learning stuff as you go to and like growing your audience, like, I don't know, it kind of just evolves itself, but it's, it's yeah. exciting. And I love the content that you're putting out Thank there. It's you. so much fun. Again, I think anybody listening who is, doesn't even have to be our age, younger or older, I think appreciates again, it not just being about partying and all these things. Like there's so many other sides and like beautiful people in this community. So it's really cool to see more of that online. And my last question for you is you said you have a busy festival season. So what is yes. coming up this year? What are you planning? I have a really hard time saying no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you're and in LA too. So you've got all the I'm in LA. Yeah. yeah. I will say though that this year I'm trying to focus on actually not just doing the SoCal events um, mm-hmm. that I historically haven't really traveled further than EDC to Vegas mm. uh, for festivals. So I really do. Uh, so I have a lot of festivals this year outside of California, which I'm excited about. Nice. Um, so next one coming up is Skyline, which is in LA, um, mm-hmm. which is also different for me because it's house and techno and that's yes, not it normally is. the genre that I um, go to, but I kind of started getting more into house during the pandemic. So I'm still learning it and loving it and, you know, getting to know it. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know that's your, that's your jam. Um, fucking best. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so skyline ultra, it'll be my first time going to ultra. Yay. Oh my God. I have to see yeah. you then. Oh, you're going. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Yeah. yeah we'll see you at we'll ultra. Meet up. Yeah. So do okay. ultra. That's my first time. Um, I'm doing Project Glow, so the new um, festival by Insomniac um, in DC. Mm-hmm. Um, I will see you there as well. Right? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> doing that. Um, I have a friend who lives really close by, and I'm taking him to his first festival, so that'll be really fun. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. So Glow, um, EDC Vegas. Uh, I don't miss that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the highlight of my year. Um, I'm trying to get tickets to Tomorrowland. Um, so the on sale is next week. Um, nice. so I'm pre-registered. I'm trying. Um, so that'll be in July. Um, and then I'm doing uh, North coast. Uh, nice. Doing that. Um, and then I probably, depending on whether I, or not, I get tickets and travel to Belgium for Tomorrowland do hard summer, which will be around mm-hmm. then. Um, and then, yeah, I usually do the, um, like countdown, um, all of those okay. kind of like holiday and escape, those type of things. Cool. Yeah. So packed calendar. And then there's always just because we have exchange and academy here, uh, venues, so mm. there are always just kind of random shows happening, um, that I go sure. to. Sure. Very. Right. What are your thoughts on, I've never, obviously I've never done a festival or show out in California. I know I need to, but what are your thoughts? Like I've never been, don't know anything about them. What are your thoughts on those venues exchange? And what was the other one you said? Academy. Academy. Yeah. So those are both venues owned by Insomniac. Um, mm-hmm. and it's, it's a love hate relationship. I think one of my favorite things about being an older raver is mm-hmm. having money to be able to buy VIP and yep. those types of things. Cause exchange is, so it's kind of a, it's a two level club. Um, but the floor can just be insanely packed to the point you're just not having fun and you're yeah, like <laughs> against a wall and it's gross. But if you yeah. buy VAP, you can be upstairs and have so much more room. And, um, I, I always like that venue because if you buy VAP, you can be upstairs and the DJ always enters right there and they'll always stop and take pictures. Oh, so I, so I awesome. just love that piece of it too, but having the extra space is just nice so I kind of mm-hmm. like to be a little bougie and and do that yep. academy doesn't have that though so I don't love academy because it can also just get crowded really packed and yeah. crowded yeah so I definitely prefer outdoor festivals just to have the room and be able to go where you want but um mm-hmm. they're not perfect but they're ours and they get great great artists so I'll fair enough go. yeah <laughs> fair enough all right well I'm excited for you that sounds like an awesome schedule and yeah I will definitely be seeing you at ultra I'm definitely planning to go to um glow as well and then we'll see where the, the rest of the summer takes us awesome yeah takes I'm us, excited but... to meet you in person yeah hell yeah well thank you so much for your time oh plug everywhere where can people find you online oh yeah um I'm on tiktok at the corporate raver um and then same handle on instagram Beautiful. Alyssa, hang tight. Everybody else, I'll be back with our Rave Culture Cast recap. Alrighty, you guys, please make sure you go show Alyssa at The Corporate Raver some love and support. Check her out on TikTok and all of her socials. Um, And if you see her at a festival, please go over and say hello. 
All right, I want to dive into our Rave Culture Cast recap because we have quite a few announcements. Um, so on the festival side, we have a new festival, the All Day I Dream Festival from Lee Burridge. Um, a lineup was announced for this, so this is really exciting. I believe this is going to be May 12th through the 15th at the Woodward Reservoir. Um really really exciting brand in general so I feel like this is a good one usually like their decor and things like that looks really really cool um but yeah you've got Guy Gerber Little Dragon Poolside let me see who else I honestly don't know a lot of these names like this isn't usually like my type of music but I believe it is um house for sure like you have Tim, Tim Green and Layla Benitez on here who I recognize but um that lineup has officially dropped uh, we also have the first few names for Core Music Festival, which is the newest festival from Tomorrowland. This is a new um, thing that they're launching in May, May 27th and 28th. Um, very eclectic lineup, which is really cool. Again, I really don't recognize a lot of these names, but um, we have Action Bronson, Little Dragon again. Um, who else is on here? Horse Meat Disco, Jamie XX, Caribou. Nina Kravitz is on here and more names to be announced. So you can see the, the different stage breakdowns for each day and that's going to be taking place in Brussels. Uh, Shambhala has also announced one of their first headliners, which is going to be Slander. So Slander fans get excited about that. Um, we haven't had Shambhala the last two years, uh, but this is a music festival that takes place in Canada. And that's going to be happening from July 22nd to the 25th. Um, they're going to be playing at the Village Stage, which is really cool. So you guys have that going on. And then lastly, ARC Music Festival did announce that they are going to be participating in Miami Music Week. So I had to shout this out because if you are a house fan, this is where it's at. Um, they've got Ilki Klein on the 24th, Hot Since 82 on the 25th, Justin Martin on the 26th, and Dombreski doing a boat party on the 27th. Very fucking cool. All different... Um, uh, venues so if you guys are into that I, I really would love to go to the Hot Since 82 show potentially um, the Dombreski boat party sounds amazing as well and there's going to be tons more uh, Miami Music Week events I'm thinking of doing a whole episode about this you guys as we get closer because there's still so many different announcements happening so many lineups so I think closer to Ultra I'm going to do a full Miami Music Week guide and just let you know what parties I plan on attending and giving you a full rundown because there's a lot to discuss there but with all of that being said, you guys, thank you so much for sticking around for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, and again, uh, I urge you to connect with us online at Rave Culture Cast on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. We are on YouTube, Facebook, and Discord. So please come join our families and subscribe over there. Um, and again, we'll see how this biweekly um, schedule goes. I know it will be a huge help for me. Um, just to kind of like catch up on things and figure out the next way forward. But um, we are not going anywhere. We are still going to be here. Many more exciting episodes to come. So uh, if you're enjoying, please rate, review, subscribe, do all of the things. Um, and again, you can go check out Rolita Couture and get a discount with code Emma K. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I will be back next Wednesday with a new episode. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.